Looking again at the parameter spreadsheet, we now see our two delays and two constraints added in the diagram with each margin result indicated in the margin column. When rows are combined, the margin result for each instance of that event is logged in the same margin column. So far, every value that we've entered for an edge event had been an actual numeric value, but you can also parameterize your diagram by creating variables in the parameter spreadsheet that can be referenced from edge events. We add variables by selecting the variable button from the upper toolbar. A new row is entered at the bottom of the spreadsheet if no row is selected, or it will be placed above a selected row. Let's create a frequency variable and have our clock reference it. We type in a name, FREQ, and give it a value of 50 MHz. Next, we'll go to our diagram window and open the clock attribute dialog box with a double click on the clock's numeric identity. In the frequency field, we'll replace the value of 50 with the variable we just created by either typing it in directly or browsing with the parameter spreadsheet. Once entered, the variable is immediately found and 50 MHz is once again our frequency of operation. We can now easily change the clock frequency by simply changing the value of the new variable. The formula field in the parameter spreadsheet can be used to reference other edge events and variables as well as to calculate complex formulations for events or variables to be referenced in the diagram. Timing Designer supplies a rich set of built-in functions accessible from the formula column allowing access to most all common mathematical functions. Other spreadsheet features include two modes for sort by column selections including resort, an undo queue accessible in both parameter and diagram windows, and a search tool. Each row event entry can be identified with its associated event representation in the diagram. You can colorize individual rows to organize like entries together or bring attention to specific row entries such as variables that control diagram characteristics. For rows that are intended to contain constant information, not subject to parameter variations, a lock feature is provided to protect the parameter value from edits. We'll cover use of library spreadsheets and how to access them in a separate demo. Let's take a look at an example diagram. This is a memory read operation for analog devices Shark DSP processor and employs extensive use of all the features we've discussed so far, particularly those associated with the parameter spreadsheet. Notice the extensive use of variables and formulas. At the top, variables are used to give details of the diagram, the part number used, the revision, and other useful information. There are also several variables used to control the characteristics of the timing diagram. There's a variable clock frequency, which in turn is in a variable to calculate the clock period. The period calculation is then used in variables that determine a derating factor for the device and a user-defined number of wait states. Variables can be nested as many layers as necessary for correct design implementation and can be used to represent things as complex as capacitive loading factors, temperature effects, and anything else that can be described by an equation. With this diagram, the variables defined are used to determine constraint requirements for the circuit with the given conditions. This allows designers to see how changes in frequency, for instance, will affect their design and how they may need to correct and adjust their design frequencies to compensate for a given operating condition. Let's say that originally, our design operates at 40 MHz. We see that with no wait states, the diagram indicates all timing requirements for the circuit are satisfied. However, if we wanted to run at 60 MHz, how many wait states would we need to justify our circuit requirements? We can answer this easily by simply changing the frequency variable and then incrementally change our wait state variable until all requirements are satisfied. We see here that a 60 MHz operating frequency needs at least one wait state for satisfactory operation. These are some of the simple types of question and answer scenarios that can be determined easily with Timing Designer.